It's not your lover. It's your ever-loving mom. I don't want breakfast in bed or anything else. It's not know. poison, Blake. At least you want the coffee. Oh, I want you to leave. Blame it on your boyfriend who left the door unlocked and you unprotected. Now, I mean it. All right. At least let me replace this for you. I'd rather go naked. What do you want me to do, fall on my knees? You know, it's just so typical. It just sums up everything about you. Sarcasm, styrofoam cups, and a wax paper bag. Can't tell you how treasured I feel. Would you rather I fetched well water and milk the cow? Woke up feeling a little guilty this morning. Gee, I wonder if I should apologize for trying to drown my daughter. Well, it's on the way to work. Plus, it's close to the dry cleaners. Everything is just so disposable with you, Mother. You're a thoroughly modern miracle. And I don't believe for a second that you came here to apologize. You came here hoping that I would, and you can forget it. I know you think my every purpose in life is to make you feel treasured. You have reminded me of it often enough that I even bought it. But you know what I found out for all my trouble? It can't be done. You are like a vacuum. You suck up everything and there is nothing left. You're like one of those, those binge purge eaters. You stuff yourself full and then you throw it all up again. Well, think about it. Are you happy with Ross? Yes. Does he make you feel treasured? Or do you find yourself thinking, if he really cared, he would have stayed five minutes longer? Or he would have used a different tone of voice? Or he would have given me a better gift than the one he gave me? Is this your last stab at motherliness? Because don't keep it up on my account. I know what a strain it is. I don't blame you for having any doubts about Ross. You know, he's been married once, for a few weeks at the most. And she promptly went insane. Well, if he didn't have a thing for neurotics, you'd never have a chance. relish seeing you get hurt. But the fact is, it is so inevitable, I can't even bring myself to care. It's like weeping myself to sleep over the future demise of the solar system. You will be you, and Ross will be Ross. And that is the cruelest fate anybody could wish on you. And you know something else? You're right about me and motherhood. I don't even know why I came here. I knew what you were gonna say. I knew what I was gonna say. It's all humbug, performed in the name of some mystical ritual that you and I just never could locate. I won't subject you to it anymore. I quit. Oh, it's... Excuse me, Julie, do I have the right day? Uh, ro um, the right day, Ross? Yeah, I was going to shoot those campaign ads, but Nadine says she has a studio book. Oh, well, I'm sure Nadine just didn't check the schedule. Um, I will be right with you, okay? Okay, I appreciate that. I will be in Roger's office. Would she leave? <laughs> Trapped in a room with me, the story of your life. Just don't want to have to explain myself to Maureen Bauer, of all people, not after last night. <laughs> oh, no, that wouldn't do. Being seen leaving your daughter's apartment? I don't know what you find so amusing. <laughs> you, Mother, you just waltz in here with the speech of your life. Probably started composing it the day I was born with the grand exit line of all time. I quit. <laughs> but you can't, can you? You just can't sweep on out of here because of what people might think. Is any of this the least bit instructive to you? I don't find any lesson in it. What exactly is it that you're quitting, mother? Or ex-mother? Whatever it is I'm supposed to call you now. How can you quit a job you never had? Who do you think raised you? Oh, raised. Are we, are we back to that one again? No, mother, I wasn't raised any more than canaries or geraniums are raised. I was fed, I was clothed, I was trained. Not to that a schoolgirl obedience luster other girls seem to glow with, I'll be the first to admit. But raised implies elevation, to be brought to a place higher. That I was not. You still think I'm dirt. And most people would find no flaw in your thinking there. I am so sick of hearing how unloved you were. All those beautiful clothes, your nice straight white teeth. 
Your freedom to never have to do anything you didn't want to do? Where do you suppose that came from? Believe me, I am not trying to induce any guilt here. It's been painfully clear for a long time that the stork did not drop off a conscience with the rest of the package. Okay. Just imagine, if you will, a detective from another planet sent to Springfield to examine the strange life of Polly Norris. Now, what makes this woman tick, he wonders, as he scratches his extraterrestrial head. Here she is, growing up, spoiled, sweet, and dumb in Springfield. And here she is, shooting her husband and going to jail. Now, here she is, being tortured and dragged through the jungle by this same monster, which I went through for you. Now, here she is, leaving the center of her known universe for exile in Europe. Marrying again to a rich person this time, which I went through for you, to someone who was as appealing as acid rain. Now, here she is back again in the humiliating bosom of all these people who watched her make the same mistakes the first time around. Now, what made her go through all these strange peregrinations? What accounts for this woman's life? Our strange, scaly friend stops and realizes that nothing accounts for her life except you. Except for being stuck and afraid to bail because of what all those terrible people in your head might say. You know what I want to know? I want to know why you didn't hand me over to Daddy when you had the chance. At least he wanted me. Oh, but... You couldn't let him win, could you? Because I loved you. Why is that so hard for you to realize? Because I know what love feels like now, Mother. Don't you get it? I have something to compare it to. And hating Daddy isn't the same thing as loving me. In fact, hating Daddy is what made it impossible. I... I know you need some kind of excuse to, to explain your miserable self to yourself, but this just doesn't wash. Oh, no. Don't think that I don't give you credit. That ungrateful, I'm not. I am proud to acknowledge to you and the whole world that you made me exactly what I am today. Nobody made you. Hell made you. <laughs> Finally, we agree. every time somebody airs one of my campaign ads? <laughs> How'd that keep in there? You know, this is a very standard contract for programming that we generate. Uh, we're not in the habit of operating as a vanity studio, much as we appreciate being chosen. Uh, you're welcome. You know, I hired over the half of the technicians that you have here way back when, because I knew that they would do a good job for the station. Blake agreed with me, by the way. Uh, and you're happy with her work, are you? Oh, very much so. In fact, I'm thinking of offering her a much more permanent position after the election. No, she won't accept it. She backs winners. Yes? Mr. Thorpe, it's Bridget. A guard just called up from the lobby. They stopped a visitor who didn't really look right to them. It might be that woman that you're waiting for from Honeydew Escorts. Well, uh, why don't you go down there and check it out, Bridget? I'll leave you alone, Roger, to enjoy your melons. I think you might enjoy staying. No, I have a very delicate digestive tract. Besides, I hate it when my hair gets all mussed up. I wonder if your merriment will survive the public disclosure of the number of calls your office has made to this very same escort service. <laughs> yeah, laugh it up, laughing boy, because I have hard evidence from one of your trusted staff. Roger, I am the district attorney. Now, given that, think of another motive, one less sordid, if that's conceivable to you, as to why I and one of my trusted staff would be calling that particular number. Could it be that we're simply doing our job and that we are right in the middle of an investigation? What a concept. Better luck next time. 
she tattle on me already? What happened? Oh, again, so soon? I mean, even after last night? I went there to apologize. And did you? I guess I forgot. So what, then? Well, naturally, she blamed me for every terrible thing that she's ever done to me. Huh? Blake didn't say that. You know, you and me, we assume that we're talking about the same girl. It is not so. There is the Blake before you failed her and the Blake after you failed her. And you're never going to know when it happens. But she will inform you sooner or later. Maybe for the rest of your life. I don't know. I'll concede Blake and I have already had conversations like that. I wouldn't concede anything. It weakens your case against me as a scorned woman gone berserk if I'm ever right again. She's still young, Holly. She's got a lot to learn. That's my line. Allowances must be made. For her? Yes. Well, I'm young, too. And I have yet to punch my way out of this plastic bag I was born in and hit something hard enough to draw blood. This is as real as it gets to me. Hating you and hating her. Don't expect me to be civilized about this. You consider yourself warned. So what are you planning to do? I don't have to do anything. Blake will destroy this so-called relationship, same as she's destroyed every other relationship she's ever had. That's who she is. You don't have a clue as to who your daughter really is. Oh, and you do? Yes, I think I do. We talk. <laughs> oh, how touching. The two of you bearing your souls along with everything else. Get over this sexual jealousy. I am just, not jealous. Just ask yourself what it is Blake and I do for one. I another. know what you do. I was there before, remember? Yeah, I remember. I cared for you, Holly, oh, and I still do. Please. And no matter what you say to me, I know that you care for Blake. She's your only child. Stop harassing her and just accept the fact that Blake and I are happy together. To hell with your happiness. Coffee or something? No. What's the matter? Uh, What's going on here? I. What's going on here? Answer me! My own daughter? Sleeping with my worst enemy, a man who would destroy me? And you do want to destroy him, don't you, Dad? I mean, you want him to lose the senatorial race. What's that got to do with it? Well, you were the one who told me to get closer. What the hell are you talking about? It's a trick. It's a, it's a trick to make him believe that I'm really on his side. What did you think it was? You telling me you didn't sleep with him? Of course not. What? Daddy, I, I would do just about anything for you, but that's disgusting. How did this happen? 
You wanted me to dig up some dirt on Ross, and when I didn't, you got angry. I didn't get angry at you. I'm just trying to find a way to nail him. I know, but you made it very clear that you wanted something, so I found something. I never meant for... You're not wearing any clothes. How was this photo taken? I had a photographer staked outside of Ross's house. He was going to a fundraiser, and I was helping him out with his speech. He went into the shower, and I saw my chance. I'd spilt something on me, so I had a reason to take off my clothes. And when he came out of the shower, I surprised him. You're telling me that he didn't wonder why all of a sudden you were all over him? Oh, Daddy, he was just way too embarrassed to protest. Anyway, I got what you wanted, didn't I? I didn't want this. I never wanted this. You were counting on me. I didn't want to let you down. Chrissy, Chrissy. Daddy, I just wanted to help you. Honey. Honey, we could have hired some woman. No, no. It, he would have known it was a setup. This way, I caught him off guard. So what, what are you going to do with that? <coughs> it is the scandal we've been looking for. We are not going to use that. Why? Think about the headlines. Senatorial candidate found in the arms of former stop girlfriend's it, stop daughter. It, stop it. There is no way I would let you get dragged into this. Daddy, I, I don't care about myself. Well, start! Start caring about yourself! Honey. Honey. Jeez, I mean, I appreciate, you know. Your loyalty or something, but I mean, you, just, you didn't stop to think about the consequences. I mean, I mean, the carelessness of leaving this on my desk. I'm sorry, Dad. Oh, I'm glad your mother didn't see it. So you're not going to tell her about this? Listen to me. We're keeping this between you and me. Okay. Okay. Go on, Ross. Go to your poor, defenseless little blank. She probably can't get out of bed without your help. Bobby, would you please stop it? What is it, Ross? Is it the gratitude? Is it those eager young eyes looking up to you, thinking you have all the answers? What a boost this is for your middle-aged ego. You're so hung up on that. How many times do I have to tell you? The age difference doesn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> you know what your trouble is? You can't handle being with a woman who's got her life together. You need that clinging, dependent female type. Someone who wants you to fix everything, make you feel like a real man. There was a time when you wanted me to fix everything, too, remember? Right. Isn't it fascinating that now, here I am, I'm running a business, I am independent at last, and what happens? You decide to sleep with my daughter, who suddenly has stepped into my role as the ultimate victim. Blake is a very independent young woman as well. Who cannot tie her shoe unless she thinks her father loves her for it. Is that what you're trying to do? Out, Daddy Roger. Molly, I thought after our talk last night that you were beginning to understand that I never meant to hurt you, and I thought you were starting to get past this vindictiveness. Oh, yes. Be nice to Holly. Tell her what she wants to hear. Or maybe try and make her feel guilty so she won't embarrass you by exposing your secret. I am not at all embarrassed by Blake. Then why are you hiding it? Is that part of the thrill? You know something, Holly? I don't care what the hell you think anymore. No. You're just afraid of what I might do. Tell them all your secrets. What you should do, woman, is get a life. This anger is just eating you alive. I have every right to be angry. I like being angry. And I am not going to let you, with your self-righteous sermonizing, try and make me feel like there's something wrong with what I've done. Like somehow I am not being mature. You say those speeches for Blake. Maybe she believes them. That's just it, Holly. Blake does believe me. Then she is the fool. Enjoy it while it lasts, Ross. I'm not through with you, Senator. What does Marler expect from you now? 
to run his campaign. That's why he hired me. You're telling me that after what I saw in that picture that he didn't try? It was just one kiss. I, I told you, Dad. I, I made an excuse. I got out of it. Listen, I don't want you to feel embarrassed talking to me about this. If he's been harassing you, I want to know about it. Look, I made it clear that I didn't want anything else, you know? Okay, but if he tries anything, you quit, you come to me, and I'll kill him. Well, it's only another month till election day. I could string him along until then. No. But if Ross wins, then you don't get the rezoning you need for Thorpe Towers. And then the whole waterfront project is just down the drain. And we let it. We just let it. Yes, yes. I mean, the election is critical to my plans. Yes, I want him to lose. But why? For you. For your future. Honey, I don't want you to have to fight like I did. I don't want you to have to endure the, the condescension of these lousy hypocrites that think they run this rotten town, the Ross Marlers of the world. I promise you, one day very soon, this town is going to be at our feet. But I'm not going to have you sacrificing yourself for anything. You're worth more than that. You are worth so much more than that. Do you really mean that? You're my daughter. You're my child. Your happiness means more to me than anything in this world. Don't you know that? I like Alan Michael in spite of himself. No, I... I mean somebody else that you didn't like. I would hope to be able to trust your judgment. Listen to me. If you're happy, I'm going to be happy. But don't write off Alan Michael just yet. I'm going to get him back for you. You'll see. You are absolutely right. Your mother is a vindictive, bad-tempered witch. I gather you two had words again. What is her problem? Us. And I was hoping after our talk last night, she'd at least be reasonable. But if anything, she's crazier than ever. And I'm afraid she's going to tell your father. Too late. Daddy already found out. Are you okay? How did he find out? He found this photograph of us kissing. How did he get this? He saw it on his desk. And who put it there? Holly? No. He doesn't know that she knows. I guess it came from that private investigator. You said you destroyed the photos and the negatives. Yeah, well, I thought I had, but he had it. Okay. So what did you tell him? I told him that it was a one-time thing, that one kiss and nothing more, that I set it up to slander you. You know that he, he thinks that I'm working against you, so I made him feel really guilty about how noble I was, sacrificing myself for the good of the cause. Did he believe you? Yeah, he did. He was very sweet, actually. He acted like... I don't know... a father. He was really afraid that I was falling into your evil clutches. I felt so guilty about lying to him. Honey, I'm sorry. Why don't we just tell him? Are you out of your mind? Like, he's gonna find out anyway. Oh, we'll let him find out later after you've won the election. You're off to Washington. It's a lot harder to kill you with Secret Service protection. <laughs> You worry too much. And you don't worry enough, damn it! What is wrong with you, Ross? Who is this woman? She's been waiting for Roger an awfully long time. I have no idea. Do you know where Roger went? Mm, he was here earlier. 
It must have been something major for him to stand up one of his tootsies. Here is our middle-aged Romeo. Uh, hello, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you, too. Look, I know you think this is a way station for your bimbos, but some of us work here. I don't know what you're talking about. This is about Chrissy. Oh, now I'm even less interested. Listen! I want you to lighten up on her. I beg she your pardon. She is a wonderful, loyal daughter. You don't begin to appreciate her. Oh, you got to be kidding. You can't begin to imagine what she was willing to do for me. I imagine more than you will ever realize. Why do you always think the worst of her? I don't know. Maybe because she's always living up to whatever the worst is that I'm thinking of I'll her. I'll tell you what. She is capable of a generosity that astounds me. And if you showed her just a little understanding once in a while, you might find her as loyal to you as she is to me. Oh, my. What did she do? Blow up the towers? She was willing to sacrifice her own happiness for mine. How noble. It's really touching to see how eager she is to please. More than you realize, and that's where she could get hurt. Good. Let her. No, I won't let her. And neither will you. I hold you completely responsible for her behavior. Me? Yes, this, this falling out that you've generated between the two of you, whatever it is, it has thrown her. She is drifting. Oh, please. You've got to stop pushing her away. Holly, she needs love and attention right now, and she could use a little of it from her own mother. Mm. What exactly is this great sacrifice our Blake has been willing to make? Well, it's about a man. Why am I not surprised? What man? It doesn't matter what man. Listen, all you need to know is that she was willing to go to bed with a man who repulses her. <laughs> What's so funny? You thinking it's noble for Blake to give herself to a man. If you knew the circumstances, you might not find it quite so amusing. Enlighten me. No, it's better you don't know. I can take it. I'm no longer the vulnerable dependent type. Blake is wallowing in that role now. Our daughter has strength that would surprise you. Nothing she does would surprise me. So tell me, how did you find out about this great sacrifice? Some photographs. Of the two of them? Together? Yeah, I was just over at her place. We talked it all out. She told me her reasons. Oh. I would love to hear them. It's enough for you to know she felt she was helping me. Oh. Must have been some explanation. So tell me, was Roth there? Why would Ross be there? He mentioned he had to see her on some campaign business. He's probably there right now. Oh. What are you doing? I got a warning. It's I gotta get over there right away. Roger, I'm Selena from the escort. Send her away. Now listen, if anybody needs me, I'm at my daughter's apartment. reason to get so upset. <laughs> I am trying to protect you. I understand that and I appreciate it, but I'm getting a little tired of acting like a teenager, worried that your mother doesn't approve and your father's going to come after me with a whip. Oh, well, he's going to come after you with a lot more than that. We are two single consenting adults. We don't need parental approval, at least I don't. Oh, and I do? Is that why you think I don't want Roger to know I'm afraid dear daddy won't love me anymore? You know how angry he's going to get. I don't believe this. I'm trying to save your neck, and you are turning it against me. That's not what I meant. <laughs> I don't even know why I bother with you. I really don't need somebody who's looking for some psychological motive behind every single move I make, who doesn't trust me. Come on, that is not true. I mean, here I am betraying my own father. This is a man who is offering me a future happiness. He wants to build a whole empire for me. He wants to give me everything. And for what? So I can save your stupid neck and you can win some stupid election and, and you just can leave me high and dry like Alan Michael and Philip and all the rest of them? On the blank. <sighs> I'm not going to leave you. <sighs> Maybe we both are. Oh, our Arthur. <laughs>
I'm sorry, honey. Ross is on his way over here. We gotta get rid of this. Oh no, I'll do that. I'll do that. Wait, I thought you're gonna join me in the shower. Why do you all? Daughter. Dad, you don't understand. I don't, huh? What is he doing to you? He didn't do anything. Blake, would you just get out of here and let me handle him? Yeah, let him handle me. Come on. Come on! Dad, please let me explain. What kind of man does this? What kind of a vile, repulsive you, creature? You don't understand. And they accuse me of being... Gee, I mean, what kind of a thing would a, attack his enemy by using his daughter? I mean, what the hell kind of man are you? Oh, get off it. You are the last one in the world to accuse someone of overstepping moral boundaries. First the mother, and then the daughter. I mean, how much lower can a man Dad, sink? Ross and I didn't... Don't! Just don't. No, I want you to know how I Ross... Don't and I don't want to hear you say his name. Do you understand? Blake, you go into... Don't you room. touch her! Don't you ever touch her again. I mean, if you wanted to get me, why couldn't you do it like a man? I never set out to get you. You're a hypocrite, you're corrupt, and you're the district attorney. You could have easily had me indicted on some trumped-up charge. Yes, if I wanted to do that, I could have done it years ago. But you didn't. You waited for just the right moment. You picked the time, you picked the place, and you picked my oh, daughter. Oh, no, I would never use Blake like that. Never. No. What the hell do you call this? None of your business. This has nothing to do with you, Roger. Right. I don't give a damn about you. Right. Look at her. She's young, she's pretty, oh, don't and she's do so that. vulnerable. Easy pickings for a cut rate saint like you. No, for the last time, you're wrong. My being with Blake has nothing to do with you, it has nothing to do with revenge. The only reason I'm with her is that I care about Blake more than I have ever cared about anyone. Oh. You can't really believe him. Would you please just stay out of here? Chrissy, get out of here. No, it's he not. He doesn't give a it's damn bad. about you or anybody else. He's a politician. He'll say anything he has to to get what he wants. No, I would never do that to Blake. Never. I'm going to fix you. No, Dad, don't start this again, please. Get out of here! No! Come on, Roger, is that what you want? You want to fight it out? Is that going to make you feel better? A hell, hell of a lot better, yeah. Stop it! All right, then, Blake, get out. No. He's right. This is between the two of us. You're wrong, Dad. Look, I know what you were trying to do. I asked you to get something on him, and you went too far, but it's my fault. I never should have asked you. That isn't what happened. And then you tried to quit your job, and he wouldn't take no for an answer, and he forced himself on you. No, Dad, you're not listening to me. I've waited a long time to Dad, get you... Dad, stop it and listen to me! I love Ross! Don't say that. I do. He's manipulating you! Can't you see that? Listen, I, I know you were trying to help me and you got in too deep, but it's over now. You don't have to do this anymore. It's finished. Dad, He's finished. It's all I over. I didn't sleep with Ross to help you. I did it because I love him and I want to be with him. You don't know what you're saying. I love Ross more than I've ever loved anybody. Stop saying that! I'm telling you the truth. No! I love you. You can't love him. I'm sorry.
father. again, Daddy. I won't do that. Please, I love you. You don't know the meaning of the word. What is it that you're so angry about? Is it the fact that I slept with Ross or that we love each other? I mean, would you rather that he were just using me or that I slept with him to get some dirty secret out of his past? Is that what you really want from me? What I want from you? I wanted everything for you. And I was willing to do anything, anything, give you the world to make up for all you never had. I appreciate everything that you've done. And all I asked from you, all I ever asked was for you to be honest with me. I trusted you. I wanted to tell you, Daddy. I swear I did. I just didn't know how. Prove that you mean that, or you can stay with him. Oh, Daddy, don't do this. This isn't fair. Yes or no? Don't you know how important that is? My father is going to come after us with everything that he's got. But we're together now, really together. And that makes us so strong. Now that I know that you love me, it just, it just doesn't matter what he does. in my father's eyes out of my mind. It's like he's still staring at me. Honey, he was angry and he was hurt. I'm worried about what he's gonna do. What if he still has pictures of the two of us together? If he does, we'll deal with it. It's not me I'm worried about, it's you. He could destroy your campaign. Let's not worry about things we're not certain of. You 
we should leave. After what you've been through today? No, no, no. I don't think so. I'll be fine. I just know what your schedule's like. Oh, forget about that. I'll cancel appointments. Such a wise idea for us to be together. Not after what happened. Besides, if, if my father does come back, I'll have a much better chance of calming him down if, he, if I'm alone. Are you sure? As long as I know you'll be back. Up, huh? These things boxed up for weeks. Great. Might as well go, go to somebody who could use them. The donor, should I put my name? Or... Well, who's ever making a donation? I'll put my daughter's. They're all her things. Okay. Kept thinking she would come around and pick them up, but now I know she won't be back. But Lee, look at Senator Flynn's own polls. They're showing Marler with a double-digit lead, which can't entirely be explained by the voters' anti-incumbency mood. People like Ross Marler. He's got one of those good guy, let's throw the football around faces. You never get the sense he's got something up his sleeve. What do you want? May I come in? Why? Because there's nobody else. Seem to remember a light-fingered English girlfriend you could drop in on. It's not the mother of my daughter. Yes. Well, that dubious distinction has led to many an unexpected call in the night. But Blake doesn't live here anymore. She's daddy's girl now. You knew, didn't you? All the time. When you fired Chrissy from the station, you kicked her out of the house. All those big fights turning against Ross. Why didn't you tell me? Because you would have said I was a liar. Because you would have said I was vengeful and petty. And I was looking to blame somebody for losing a man who was more interested in sleeping with the television station than with me. <sighs> Look, when you run out of doors to come knocking on, you come knocking on my door. But I know that is no insurance against a knife in the back when it comes to your precious baby. Now, you've had a few illusions punctured, but they'll all be fine in the morning. Right. Tell me. Something happened? Oh, you're heading out. Oh, yeah. Let's say American Legion or what? Um, is this a hit and run campaign speech or is there Chicken Ola King involved? Excuse me? Well, it's just that we're having this crisis at Spalding and they called and asked that I come there and chew my fingernails with everybody else and my two live-in babysitters no longer live here and I can't seem to track down Dad. Uh, it's, it's not a dinner, but Ross and I had plans. Well, not so much plans, but I... I well, I mean, if you, if you can't come later, maybe you could call him up and tell him you're going to be a little late, at least until Ed gets home. All right, never mind. I'll call Julia. No, listen, I can't even get in touch with him. I've been trying all day. It's like he's making a moving target out of himself. I see. And you're taking this personally. Well, I don't see that I have any other choice.
was unlocked, so I opened it and I came in. Ed, Marine. That Bower is certainly trusting. Yeah, just a minute. Another rugged individualist. <laughs> she told me she went to work for Ross to help me. And I had to pretend that things were strained between us because of it, for his benefit. <laughs> he must have found that wildly entertaining. She sent me on a wild goose chase with that escort service business. Of course, that was probably his idea. I doubt it. He wanted her to dig up dirt. She was the dirt. She had to come up with something. What about this photograph? Where did that come from? I don't know. But still, she managed to dance her way out of that in the same style, so... That can't be what opened your eyes. I walked in on them. Why aren't you laughing? Come on, you helped them play me for a fool. You should share in their enjoyment. Even then, it took a long time for me to see what was right in front of me. I was bathing in a tidal wave of guilt that Chrissy would go to such lengths for me. Now, come on, isn't that comical? This is the Blake that you believed in then. No, I don't find it comical. So what did you do? Well, I started for Ross, and I wound up slugging Chrissy. I'm real proud of that. And what did they do? Well, Ross delivered uh, some aria about how much he cared for her naturally. And Blake? See, I think that this really started out the way she said, that when she went to work as his campaign consultant, she really intended... But then, you see, he seized on this opportunity. He took complete advantage of it. I can't believe how you're still finding excuses for her. Blake was already sleeping with Ross. The campaign job was a cover-up for that. She knew exactly what she was doing to you and to me every step of the way. And I'm not going to stand here and help you to forgive her. Ed, I'm sorry. I should have... Uh called first, asked if I could use the person. What are you talking about? That's why we told you where the spare key was. So you could come up whenever. Yeah, <clears throat> what are you playing hooky from, anyway? Decorated war veterans, heaven forgive uh, me. What about you? Oh, you name it. <clears throat> you know what's the first thing to hit me whenever I come up here? Hmm. I miss my mother. You know, traffic has pretty much covered up her tracks everywhere else, but not here. That's strange, isn't it, for a middle-aged man to... No, no, no. Believe me, a lot of people miss Bert. It's not that she knew everything, but she understood everything, which is exactly kind of the opposite of my condition. <laughs> Bert led a very substantial life, not unlike your own. My life is about a mile wide and one inch deep. Oh, bull. Must be exactly what I wanted, though. It's a full and glorious reflection of nobody else. Listen, Ed, I would give my eye teeth to have what you have. Yeah, most people would. I think I'd give my eye teeth, too. All that contentment. But what? God, do I sound like I'm complaining? I'm sorry, I don't mean to. I have a beautiful wife, a beautiful daughter waiting for me at home. I'm at the top of my profession. Surrounded by people who are almost nightmarishly familiar. <laughs> you know what it is? I think I'm coming up against that fear that I am an unworthy heir to my predecessors. I mean, I am the last male bower to be keeping the home fire burning. What for? I have no idea, but it is still burning. Yeah. Things do not satisfy the way we were led to believe. Uh, take a Senate campaign, for instance. Once you're doing it, it's about as stimulating as watching tires burn. <laughs> I think, Ed, that we should rise up against this conspiracy that deluded us in our youth. Although I seem to remember, in an undergraduate philosophy course, that as a rule, people only get what they want when they can no longer use it. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, that same book went on to both prove and disprove the existence of a supreme being. Good. Yeah, I keep waiting for this older and wiser stuff to kick in, too. I mean, older's coming along quite nicely. Yes. 
I grew up in this town knowing everybody. And of course, everybody knew me. It was like having 15,000 surrogate parents. Of course, Springfield isn't the same little burg it was when I grew up here. Now it's actually possible for me to walk down the street without somebody coming up to me and grabbing me by the shoulders and staring me in the eyes and saying, you're Bill Bowers' boy, aren't you? <laughs> actually, I kind of like it. They always kindly averted their eyes from my youthful transgressions and then my not-so-youthful transgressions, again, probably because I was Bill Bowers' boy. You know, it's like... It's like this town is a hammock that I never fell out of, you know? And then thinking of my ambition to leave my mark on the world, it seemed just as pursuable here as in, say, Zanzibar, so I stayed. I stayed. And then all my modest, sensible dreams came true. And Ross, I'm a little piece of Americana. You are? Yes. Would you be my campaign mascot? <laughs> uh, oh, I don't think you'd want that. Why not? Because I screw up. Don't ask me why. I don't even have to be unhappy. Don't have to be losing my senses. I was on the brink of going over the brink this afternoon. I always pay the consequences, but you know, the thing is, the consequences are never that bad. So why is that? What is going on? Is that still because I'm Bill Bower's boy? Who knows? Man. It's no better roses, is it, being a pillar of the community? Sure it is. Of course it is. As long as you don't mind that most of the roses are plastic. <laughs> Roger hit you? Not hard. I mean, not to hurt me. Well, it just seems like... Oh, he was just so furious. I don't think that he... Knew. Well, why am I trying to apologize for him? You know, sometimes when the worst thing that could happen finally does happen, it's almost a relief, is it? Ross didn't try to explain me away the way he did with my mother. He stood up for me. He stood up for us. He even told Daddy he loved me. Well, the L word still ties him in knots so he kind of picked his way around it, but we all know what he meant. I just wish I knew what my father was going to do. I mean, whatever he does to Ross, he does to me. And he knows it. It just almost doesn't matter, though. I mean, I will fight to the death against anything that would cost Ross this election. But when the dust settles, I do know now that win or lose, he's still mine. Boy, you weren't sounding that secure a few minutes ago. Well, I think I was letting my natural paranoia get the best of me. Because I haven't seen him since then. Mm. You know, with any other man that I've ever been with or married or just fooled around with, it just made perfect sense that when the phone didn't ring for 15 minutes, that that was it. I was never going to see them again. But it's so different with Ross. It's like I graduated from a bicycle to a Rolls Royce and I have to keep reminding myself that the chain won't fall off. I remember that feeling really well. With Ed? I was a mess when I came back to Springfield. I had just walked out of a relationship that I had thought was perfect with this guy that I was living with in Long Island. Living with? Maureen. Yes, well, Maureen Bauer, PTA Madonna, is a relatively new creation. Anyway, after several happy years, I found out that he was cheating. Such a stupid schoolboy term. Of course, all the other ones are so inept or melodramatic. Terms like sleeping around, unfaithful, adulterous. It's true, I never thought of that. And I never thought something that could only de be defined by words that were so stupid could hurt so much. It really did me in. My maturity went down the drain, which of course is something that maturity should do every now and again, so I came home to Mom, and suddenly there was Ed Bauer. And this light bulb went off in my brain, and I thought, why are you doing this wrong when all it would take to do it right is him? Makes all the difference. 
someone you can trust. Of course, in five years, everyone tells a lie, and in ten years, everyone does something unforgivable. But you keep going on, of course, if you can, and you can. But it takes a slightly different mental attitude. Trust takes on another meaning. It's not that you trust him not to break your heart. It's that he'll be sitting in the living room at home when he does. And he'll remember to bring in the dry cleaning in the morning. I mean, I know it sounds terrible, Blake, but it's not. It, it, it's everything. It's, it's happiness. Sometimes I think the sovereignty of nations and the peace in the world in general depends on us old married ladies keeping our mouths shut. Never mind. Trust him, love him. You might as well. The alternative isn't nearly as nice. Better get going. Yeah, yeah. Me too. You know, we should face down our women together in the driveway. Just look at them and say, hey, it's a guy thing. <laughs> I don't think I'll be seeing your driveway much between now and election day. Well, discretion is something I'd expect from you, but self-restraint is kind of amazing from Blake. <sighs> I get this involuntary muscle contraction in my neck every time you mention her name because I know, Ed, that you still picture Blake in pigtails. I just like to see you squirm. You do it so well. <laughs> oh, obviously it took a long time to get used to the idea, but I think Maureen, Maureen and I came to the opinion that all the sticky circumstances notwithstanding, Blake could have done a lot worse than you. I wonder. Bed of roses, bowl of cherries, whatever it is, isn't it nice to know it can still surprise you? And fine, upstanding pillars of the community like us get to be a certain age. <laughs> what was it, 36 or something? You sort of assume that things like that have to be squirreled away in the attic along with the Nehru jacket. Things like what? Women. New women. Wild women, women you didn't expect. Roger knows. Oh, damn. What now? You know him better than I do. Do you know that there are still nights when I follow him over that cliff in my dreams? You know, Ed, what I want to know is, do you think that he would try and destroy me if it meant doing the same thing to Blake? I was afraid you'd say that. It's time to watch out for hidden tape recorders, buddy. Hidden cameras. It's too late. He has photographs of the compromising kind taken at my place, in my bedroom. Now, he has destroyed one that I know of. Maybe the others, too. And if that's so, he's going to come after him for more ammunition. I sure as hell don't want to give it to him. Now, this is partly selfish, but mostly for Blake. You know how these things, these scandals play out? I mean, the man, all he loses is his job. The woman is left hanging there and harassed by offers for nude photo sessions, and suddenly her ex-boyfriends are appearing on talk shows, giggling with double entendres about her tongue. Well, so listen, why can't you and Blake just cool it till after the election? I mean, that way, if, if uh, Roger doesn't have anything now, he's not going to get anything new. Or is, is that what you meant by... Staying away from my driveway, I mean, what... That's what I meant. But what am I going to tell Blake? I mean, I care about you too much to keep on seeing you? Yeah, that's a hard thing to say to anyone. Ed, that's double talk even for a politician, huh? All right, look. You may have an unlikely ally here that you've overlooked. Who? Holly. Holly. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. She hasn't blown the whistle on you yet, has she? Only because she loves to see me squirm. I don't think she wants to see her daughter publicly humiliated. Now, if Roger does have any of those pictures left, Holly may be the one to coax them away from him. I appreciate the thought, Ed, but all things considered, I'd rather have Roger have those photographs than Holly. 
Now you know what you've been vying with me for all these years. The privilege of being done dirt by your daughter. She doesn't see this as having done anything to anybody. I bet your part. Well, from her point of view, all she did was fall in love. And you believe that? I believe that Marler is capable of making her believe it, and yes. And the fact that he was involved with me slipped her well, mind. Well, Holly, now come on. First he was and then he wasn't. Isn't that right? She was the aggressor, Roger. Yes, but you can identify with this attraction. Isn't that right? No, 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 no. I don't buy this. This fair-minded, objective routine. It burns you. I know it does. All along, you've been plotting the downfall of candidate Marler, and she's been whispering your every move into his ear. Come on. It's got a stick in your throat. And you've been dangling the skyscraper in front of her and her own personal parking space, and all the time she's been crawling into bed with your worst enemy. Of course, you have so many worst enemies, sheer probability would predict she'd go to bed with one of them sooner or later. I should have known better than to come to you with this. You are so filled with hatred of me, of Ross, of men, period, that you are incapable of dressing the question of what do we do. So what? What do we do? Well, I can make very sure he doesn't get his Senate seat. Can't I? Though not without some cost to our daughter in the process. Yes, that is what is unthinkable to you, that it should cost her anything. Believe it or not, I understand that. I mean, I've loved her, too. She is such a susceptible girl, due to her upbringing. I mean, she sees us as loving her in the abstract, but somehow denying her any real love. I by my absence, you apparently by your presence. I know she thinks that. So she's totally vulnerable to anything that passes as absolute devotion. It was an easy trick for Marler to paint this picture of them as star-crossed lovers defying her uncaring parents. And with her in his pocket, he could know well in advance of any campaign strategy I was working out with Flynn. I mean, he's going to dump her at 8.01 p.m. when those polls close on election day. The big question for me is between now and then, do I let him get away with it? What? I think you so regret missing her childhood that you're determined to keep her in it for the rest of her life. Uh, what is that supposed to mean? Ross is hardly the mastermind you make him out to be. And the reason for my hate, my anger, is my frustration at seeing you over and over again excuse her anything. Shield her from every responsibility. She is my daughter. I know you do it because you adore her, but look what you're doing. You have given her a totally inconsequential life, a life of no consequences whatsoever. Now, how can she tell the difference between a bad choice and a good choice if you, you smooth everything out in the end? Oh. How, how does she know that it's, it's far enough to go or it's too far if there's always some safety net under her to catch her? I don't care about Ross. He can lose the Senate campaign. He can dump her. I don't care about him. But let her make a mistake. Let her know it. Let her feel it. And let her learn from it. And maybe we can only hope that she'll learn from her mistake about us, that we love her no matter what she does. So I just throw her to the wolves to prove my love to her. Well, think about it. Think of all the things that you have not been held accountable for, legal or otherwise. Now, what has this done for you? You come to me asking what is the normal human response. Well, I am telling you, you're, you're going to do whatever you please, but... Unless your highest ambition is for her to turn out exactly like you, maybe we should think long and hard about doing something different this time. You made your point. We're going to be held accountable, too. You remember. Be on your way to the, um... 
Hi, has Mr. Marler called in yet? His niece? Oh, not her asthma again. Poor Samantha. Well, of course he drove her, oh, drove her to the hospital. No, I'm sure the good people here at the Legion Hall will understand. Goodbye. Ross, am I one of the people you're hiding from? William, um, tell Jilly we have to shuffle something out of the 11 o'clock newscast to make room for a major story. Yeah. Oh, and I need somebody to pick up uh, some photos that go with the story for video transfer. Mm -hmm. I'm home. Thank you. You look like you were in the woods. Did I make you feel hunted? No. Do I now? No. Sorry about this afternoon. Oh, you would have liked them. They were a rip-roaring bunch, those legionnaires. Do you mind that I'm here? No, of course not. Then why aren't you saying anything? Because I... I don't want to say the wrong thing. Well, we could just go to bed and you wouldn't have to say a word. Yes, of course I am. It's just that I don't think that we should sleep together again until after the election. You don't want to sleep together? Yes, of course I want to. I just don't think that we should for a few weeks. I mean, if Roger has more compromising photographs of us that he's going to be feeding to the press, we'll know by then. And if he doesn't, I'm not going to give him another opportunity. And after? And after, it's all up to us. Blake, I have seen firsthand how your father can hurt you. I'm not going to take that risk. Well, if you lose the election, you probably won't want to see me again anyway. It will never come to that. No. Because I won't let it. record on such a ridiculous charge. Miss Lizzie, please. Now, you're letting people walk out on the street all the time who are convicted. Hey, look, lady, do me a favor. Take it to the DA. Ross. Holly, I'm very busy. I don't have time for personal matters, all right? Nor do I. That'll settle it. Murdoch, it's on your desk. Get it to Judge Collier. Listen, I'm here about Nick McHenry. Oh, Levy, would you keep trying to call Mr. Connell for me? Yeah. Can't you do anything to help him? I just talked to Chief Ryan, told him to treat Nick with courtesy. But this is a sensitive case, and we're not going to play favorites just because he's a scolding. You mean far be it for you to go to bat for someone unless it's politically expedient. Don't start. 
Scott, are you so afraid how this is going to affect the polls you won't help somebody you know is innocent? I don't decide guilt or innocence. That's what juries are for. Remember juries? Look, I need to talk to you in private. It's too late for a last-minute negotiation. You made your bed. Now you can have nightmares in it. Been in kindergarten. No, don't turn it off. I've been thinking a lot about us, too. About this whole mess. I don't know how we got to this place. A wish. If wishes for horses beggars would ride. I never thought I was capable of hitting you. I'm a violent man. I have tremendous anger. But I never thought anything could drive me to do that. It's okay. That's no, not even remotely okay. When you rejected Hart, when you got close to the Spaldings, I could deal with that. But when you told me that you loved this man... I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you, Dad. I wanted to cut off my hand. The minute it happened, I would have given anything to take it back. But maybe some good have, will have come of it if you can now realize that this thing with Ross is a terrible mistake. That's not why I came here. It's not what I came to say. I just want my father back. Please, Dad, I have to talk to you. Talk. I can't stand it if you shut me out. You're the only person who's ever accepted me for who I am. What I am. Look at us back then. We were so innocent, so hopeful. Who'd have ever imagined what we'd go through? Just like you can't imagine us working this out now, but we can if we just decide to do it. You are so young to me right now. You make the biggest mistake of your life, and you think if you can get me to pretend it doesn't hurt, it didn't happen. What you've done with Ross changes everything. You know what's unimaginable to me now? that I will ever trust you again. I'm busy. Holly, five minutes. So, how does it feel to return to the place where love first blossomed? How many times did I? Walk in on the two of you. I can remember reminding her to be polite to the guest. Are you through? Just tell me you didn't do it on my couch. Will you stop being wounded long enough to listen to me? So, what? What is it? You trying to talk me into being a good sport again? No. Just a decent mother. <laughs> no matter how long your list of real or imagined injuries... Oh, it's all in my mind now, is it? I'm just asking you to think about Blake. You have made it all but impossible for me to think of anything else. So, what are you going to call me now? Mom? 
Don't you love your daughter enough just to be happy for her? Stop making this all about Holly's big loss. Oh, what? Never mind. So, uh, what is it? Are congratulations in order here? I don't know what to become of Blake and me. It's too soon to tell. But I do know that the two of you will always be mother and daughter. Oh, yeah. Play up the mother-daughter theme. That makes me feel warm all over. Holly, I'm just asking you to consider what Blake is going through. Excuse me. This is not something that happened to Blake like chicken pox that I'm supposed to nurse her through. What are you doing here? You're calling on my last bit of maternal instincts? You want my approval, Ross. You must have some small grain of love left for Blake. Oh, but yours is all so encompassing. What possible difference could my small grain make? Holly, no matter how tough Blake looks, you know that she's vulnerable and scared. And there's a lot of little girl there who's worried that her parents don't love her. Oh, yeah, and whose fault is that? You have to make a choice. Why? You know why. No, I mean, why don't you trust me? I didn't plan this, Dad. I'm not acting out some subconscious whatever need to hurt you. I would never presume to tell you who or who not to be with. I'm your father! Look, the thought of you and Marler together, I just can't stand it. He has devoted his life to destroying me. You're wrong. Okay, never mind. Never mind. It's not about me. It's about you. Chrissy, I know it's been a long road, full of big promises and vague reassurances, but honey, we have arrived. I am now able to offer you a life. I mean, the stuff that dreams are made of. And I promised you that Alan Michael would be a part of the life, and he still will be. Now, isn't that what you want? I thought so. I put so much effort into trying to win Ellen Michael back that I never stopped long enough to ask myself, why did I have to work so hard? We're just so much alike. I mean, look at you and Mother. She's the love of your life, and you couldn't be more different. It's the same thing with Ellen Michael and Elaney. She's simple, uncomplicated, honest. Everything that he admires and he isn't. That's how I feel about Ross. Look, I know how lonely you've been, how ripe you are for someone who appears to care about you, but you are deluding yourself with Marler. Why do you think that he doesn't really care? Because I have known him a lot longer than you have. Look at your mother. Where is she now? He dumped her the minute he knew we were finished. What makes you think you're going to be any different? Because I'm good for him. <sighs> No woman is good enough for Marler. He is so vain about his virtue, he sets impossible standards. It's different with me. He makes me feel good about myself, Daddy. When I walk into a room with him, people look at me differently. Not with some raised eyebrow, but with respect. Do you know how that feels, what that means to me? Are you saying you are ashamed to be my daughter? Opportunity knocked. Or at least opportunity took her dress off. What's the matter? Can't handle it, Russ? Holly, why do you continue to belittle a relationship that just makes your daughter happy? Think of all those times when you were wishing she had somebody better than Ellen Michael. Oh, is that what you are now? The knight in shining armor riding to the rescue. Whatever happened to the independent woman thing? Those were the rules with me. Don't compare yourself with Blake. Don't worry. Boy, she in for a rude awakening. So what exactly are the plans here? I mean, I've heard no talk of engagement rings or promises to move her to Washington. Not... You haven't heard because it's none of your business. Hey, you came here, remember? Now, let's see. You want me to forgive and forget. 
be there for Blake because you know her father will probably never forgive her. You know, I was so impressed with the way you stood up to Roger. I never would have believed it. What did you say? What did I say? Let's see. I'm thinking that maybe... I'm standing up to Roger. You were there, weren't you, Holly? I... I, um, I saw that he was kind of upset, so, yeah, I followed him. You didn't follow him. You sent him there. You set this whole thing up so Roger would find out, and you could walk out of there with your hands clean. You're attacking me for keeping my hands clean? So what if I am? I'm fed up with all the dirt, Ross. I leave that to you. Of course, I'm not ashamed to be your daughter. I love you. Listen, I know what it's like to try to keep your head up in a town where they hold your name against you. That's not going to be my legacy. You don't owe me anything, Dad. A name that commands respect. I owe you that. Chrissy, I'm the one person in this earth who understands exactly how you feel. So don't you understand why I'm so tired of trying to prove myself, Dad? I'm tired of being bitter and angry, groping around in the dark, trying to latch onto something and never being satisfied once I get it. This is my chance to be something else. No! No! See? This! This is your chance. Right here. This is a chance to take faith into your own hands. Look at this. This building, this office complex, this is not about money. This is about respect. It's a wonderful thing in this country. If you're rich enough and you're powerful enough, people have very short memories when it comes to your past. Now, why? Why would you throw all this away? Throw your life away on Marler? Because I meant what I said. I love him. Don't give me that shocked, phony, virtuous expression of yours. I didn't set this whole ugliness in motion. You and Blake did. You are sad and mis- Stop misguided. it, Ross. If you had just stopped to think about it, Holly. Well, it felt good, so I did it. I learned that from you. Don't you understand? After all those years of fighting Roger for influence over Blake, now he's going absolutely crazy. This was your chance. If only you had understood that Blake had needs, too. You know, Just being civil to Blake would have put you ahead of Roger. Another thing I am tired of is this relentless condemnation of Roger. As I see it, you're even worse. At least he's open about how he feels. Like it or not, everybody knows exactly where they stand with Roger. You are a hypocrite. This is absolutely incredible. <laughs> You're telling me to put the whole sorry mess behind me that I should open up my arms to my little girl if I care anything about family values. If anything had anything, if anybody had anything to do with destroying this, what was left of this family, it's you. Roger hit her. Hard. Did you stay to see that, Holly? I bet you did. That was your favorite part of the show. Oh, shut up! What the hell did you think was going to happen? I mean, after all the years of being terrorized by Roger, being abused by Roger, begging me and others to protect you, now you have deliberately turned him loose on your own daughter. You think Marler forgets for a minute whose daughter you are? Boy, he must be having himself a field day indulging in his l wicked little fantasies. Why do you have to run me I'm down? I'm telling you the facts of life. What it is, who we are. You got mixed up, lady. You want to believe life is open-ended. It's filled with limitless possibilities. You're not a kid anymore. You can't afford this mistake. No, you mean you can't. I don't separate the two. And if you think I'm going to let Marla bring us both, be mistaken. I'm not going to beg you, Dad. You're going to do whatever you have to do. But if you want me to care about you at all, don't humiliate me in public. I understand your dream, and I love you for wanting to make me a part of it. But I've changed, and this is my chance at having some real happiness. Daddy, you say that you love me. And deep down, I really believe that you do. Please don't do something that we're both going to be sorry for. Be happy for me.
Oh, Mr. Thor, they have those photos for tonight's news. Graphics is going to need some time to get them ready if we're going to make the broadcast. You can see this was a bad idea. Oh, yeah, you're just full of them, aren't you? You know, somehow, someway, Holly always ends up on the side of Roger, and believe me, you're going to regret it again. I promise you that. Oh, I almost forgot. The big news. The latest polls came in this evening, and you are leading Flynn by a hefty margin, most of which is attributed to the women's vote. Won't it be a disaster if something happens at the last minute to turn all those women off? I hope she's worth it, Ross. It's late. Good night. Uh, I should get those over to the studio. I'm not sure I want to use them anymore. Well, what should I tell the studio? I'll put it. I, mean, I don't know what's going on. I'll handle it. Uh, I'll need something better if I decide to go ahead with it. I'm really sorry to drag you all the way over here, William. Oh, it's no problem. Good night. Good night.